Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tyne. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a 27 inch iMac 2010 and it is the mid 2010 version. And this particular computer is a little bit older this stage. It's nearly 11 years old, but it still can be functional if we install a solid state drive into it. So the internal mechanical hard drive is gonna be very, very slow. And um, the solid state drive is gonna breathe some new life into it. So today I'm gonna to be installing a one terabyte solid state drive into this computer. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. So the conventional wisdom is that you need a suction cup to pull up the glass, right, which is, uh, definitely does work but you don't necessarily need that because you can just simply pry the actual glass up with your fingers if, if you get a spudger or something or a credit card then you can actually pull it up with your fingernails so that just comes up um, it's kind of magnetically attached to the uh, computer so we're just going to take the glass and put it to the side so next thing that we need is a t10 screwdriver so i've got this particular torx head screwdriver and i'm just going to be pulling out the screws from the side so there's four here and four here so you just need to go in a little bit deep and there's a screw here that we just need to pull out so just beware of the kind of magnets on the side here because they're quite strong because they're used to keep the glass in one two three four on the side here So on the left hand side there's four more of these screws that we need to get rid of. So there's just three more on this side, so we just gotta get this one. So once all the screws have come out, it's time to lift up the screen. Now this thing is quite heavy because it's the 27 inch version. So normally what I tend to do is get a screwdriver and just lever out the edge and then kind of pull out from there. And it's really quite heavy, so just be careful. So once that's levered out, you can see there's um, a little bit of cabling here, which it's a little bit sticky on this side, but I'm just gonna pull this out on the left hand side. So there's a little tiny cable there. And then I'm going to just lift the adhesive on this side so I can get to the actual cable and then lift it up like this. And what I tend to do is to put a box or something like this to keep the screen open and then I can work on the next part of the computer. So the hard drive that we've identified is right here. So um, when we're working in here, it's, it's very important to be very careful with the capacitors below this part here near the power. It's a good idea to press the power button, which is on the underside of the, the computer, just to discharge any electricity that might be in the way. So the hard drive caddy is held in by these screws here. So these two screws here, are also torx screws so i'm going to use the same screwdriver to pull out these two screws once the screws are removed we can loosen up the actual hard drive unit itself and we're going to pull out the sata cable and the data cable there and then we have another cable here which i think is the thermal sensor so now we have a hard drive removed. We need to remove these mounts so that we can use them on our solid state drive. And they come right off. So now with this one terabyte Western digital hard drive, which is severely degraded, which is gonna put this to the side. So I'm gonna be installing this SanDisk SSD plus solid state drive. It is the one terabyte capacity, and it's going to basically replace the internal hard drive. But obviously it's much smaller. So, I mean, we could just fit this in as is. It won't rattle around too much. It doesn't really matter because if the solid state drive moves, it actually doesn't do any damage but we're gonna mount this properly. I'm gonna use one of these Sabre 2.5 inch SATA brackets, which will make it fit into the 3.5 inch enclosure of the original hard drive. So basically I'm gonna take this apart and install the solid state drive into this bracket and then put it in properly. 
So I've now installed the 2.5 inch solid state drive into this 3.5 inch adapter and we're going to put the side parts on as well and then the bracket holders there too. So once the brackets are back in, I can now insert this back into the actual computer. So these two holes go into the back here and they slot into these black holes there. And then I'm going to put the bracket down, just move the cable around and that fits like that. So normally I recommend that we insert the cabling in first so that we don't get locked in. So this is the, and then that just slots in like that. And then we're gonna mount the two screws in here. So the solid state drive is now nicely mounted in and it's not gonna move around. The thing to be aware of is that this particular thermal sensor is not attached. Now, OWC does sell thermal sensor cables um, and uh, what, what's gonna happen is that the computer is not gonna detect a thermal sensor on this hard drive, but we're gonna fix that with software. So um, instead of buying and investing more money into a cable, we're going to install software to control the fan speed of this computer. So basically once that hard drive is attached with the SATA cables in, we can actually safely pull this computer screen down. We need to make sure that we reattach this uh, screen cable into this port here as we lower the screen down here. So once that's attached, then we are safe to re-screw this computer in. So now we put the glass back on. Um, if you've got any dust on the screen, then it's time to do it now. I'm going to using a microfiber cloth to just lightly dust this. And then we just take our glass and we put it on the hinge like this. Just push it into the edge there and then let it snap back into place with all the magnets. So in order to install the operating system on this new solid state drive, which is now installed internally, what I'm going to do is open the internet recovery menu. So I'm going to press the power button and hold the command and R key on an attached keyboard. So I can see that logo has come up here. Um, we're just gonna wait for that to fully load up and then we'll go to the next step. So once internet recovery has opened up, we've got a selection of menu items here. So what I'm gonna do is to go to disk utility and press continue. And then what we want to do is to format the internal solid state drive. So this is the SanDisk SSD plus. And what I'm gonna do here is click erase and I'm going to set it as an APFS solid state drive. So this particular computer maximum operating system is going to be Mac OS 10.13, which is High Sierra. So what I'm going to do is to name this Macintosh HD and I'm formatting it under APFS, which is the High Sierra formatting. And I'm going to install it here there. Once that's complete, we press done and then we quit out of that. And then I'm going to click on reinstall Mac OS and press continue here and it's going to reinstall Mac OS High Sierra. So I'm gonna press continue here, press agree here. I'm gonna select the internal Macintosh HD solid state drive and click install. So I'm just gonna let that run and install. So the installation of the operating system has completed. You can kind of hear the fans roaring right now because it can't detect a temperature for the hard drive. But so uh, we're gonna continue with this installation process and we're gonna fix the fan issue. So here we're just gonna click continue and go through the standard uh, setup. So we're now into the actual desktop experience itself. First thing I'm gonna do is install a Mac fan speed controller. So I'm gonna download this application called Max Fan Control and I'll leave a link to this in the description. We're just going to click on the free download button here, download for Mac OS here, and then we're going to install the application and then open it up here. I'm gonna move it to the applications folder. The hard drive fan speed is setting at 5,000, so that's way too high. I'm going to set a sensor-based value based on the CPU core instead. And as soon as we tie it to the CPU temperature, then the fan speed drops right down. So this application is very, very handy. What I'm gonna do is to make sure that it auto starts when the computer starts. And then that basically means that whenever you're using the computer, the fan speed is gonna be at the correct speed. Um, we can also set this 
to use the actual SanDisk temperature sensor. So a lot of the modern solar state drives have a temperature sensor actually on the drive. So that, that saves quite a lot of money. Um, rather than buying the OWC cable, tie it directly to the SanDisk solid state drive and the fan speed just completely changes and uh, is tolerable. And it will ramp up if the actual solid state drive increases in temperature. But solid state drives are relatively reliable and they have no moving parts. So it shouldn't really increase in temperature much. So we can just hide this to the menu bar and that's solved. So the other thing I'm going to be doing is to do an actual RAM upgrade of the computer because this particular computer has a four gigabyte memory. And what we want to do is increase and fill up all the RAM slots here. So I've tipped over the iMac onto its back and I'm propping it up with this uh, box here. And what we're going to do is to access this RAM slot tray here. And all I'm going to do is to pull out the screws here. All I'm going to do is pull out the screws here, the Phillips head screwdriver. So this is a little bit dusty. It's just going to clean this out with some compressed air. So as we can see here, we've got the uh, two RAM slots exposed. We've got these little tabs here to pull out the actual existing RAM sticks. So we have these um, Samsung 2 gigabyte uh, 10,600S modules. These are um, DDR3 modules. And I'm going to be adding two of these Hynix RAM sticks here. So um, I'm just going to fit them into the top slots here. So make sure the uh, nodules on the left and then just plug that in like so. Tuck these uh, two little tabs in there. So no, this computer is now running with the solid state drive. It's running with eight gigabytes of upgraded RAM. And in 2021, this is a pretty decent computer, even though it's a virtually 11 year old computer. So. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this particular video useful. If you made use of this tutorial, please leave a comment and please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.